I promised some time ago that I'd be looking at some more games of Michal Tal, but somehow never got around to it. But uh, just before the candidates tournament starts on March the 11th, I believe it is, let's have another look at a game of Michal Tal. So, Tal, world champion in 1960 at the age of 23 when he beat the patriarch of Soviet chess, Michal Botvinnik. Now, in 1960, that was really extraordinary. Um, players really matured much later, so it was an incredible achievement, particularly beating Botvinnik with his kind of iron logic and you know, a man that stuck to principled positional rules. Uh, and Tal came onto the scene like a comet, uh, played so creatively, such a daring... Um, attacking and daring strategic play as well. Just remarkable. But Tal was dogged by ill health throughout his chess career, throughout his life. Um, he only managed to uh, hold on to that world title for, well, just less than a year when Botvinnik won the return match. Um, he, he was still capable of playing incredible chess after that. Um, but the the brilliances came in flashes, um, and he he never really maintained that consistency. He never had, maybe he never had consistency in his chess results. Nevertheless, 1979 was a very good year for Tal. He won uh, the so-called Tournament of Stars in Montreal that that included most of the of the top players. Of, of that time. He came equal first with Karpov. I think that says it all. Karpov was really at the height of his powers in the late 70s. And I've picked out a game from 1979. This was from the, the um, Soviet Union against Yugoslavia match, or is very well contested. And Tal was playing here against Dragoljub Velimirovic, who has uh, had a reputation as being an incredibly dangerous attacking player. So, well, let's see what happened between these two fiery players. I think, considering Vlimirovic's reputation, it looks to me as though Tal is playing, well, quite conservatively in the opening with this b3 move, which, um, yeah, a, a quiet start. So, bishop b2. And Vlimirovic, well, perhaps not unpredictably, um, takes the fight to white. He's not prepared just to play, you know, knight f6 and e6 and d5 or whatever, e5. But this is a very logical move, actually, just blocking out this bishop on b2. So Tal sticks to his strategy of, um, you know, fairly quiet play, just using a double fianchetto. And, of course, the bishop is pointing at this weakened square on d5. So, you know, Tal was very capable of playing positional chess as well. And now here, I would expect perhaps g6 or knight e7, going for this kind of setup with black. But Vlimirovic played bishop b6, which, uh, okay, this should perhaps come later on in the game. You know, you want to play queen d7 and perhaps trade off this bishop on g2. But slight there is a slight problem with playing this at such an early stage as we're about to see. So knight c3, very logical, looking at d5. And now knight f3, excellent move from Tal. Basically, the knight threatens to go to g5. Now, obviously, h6 is preventing this, is just very slow. White will seize the initiative with d4. And... Well, you can see that white is already ahead in development. So Vlimirovic played bishop h3, which is kind of logical, but black is wasting a lot of time in the opening. You know, he's moved the bishop twice, moved the queen twice, and so white is basically ahead in development. Knight d5 threatens the big check on c7. And, well, I think not even Vlimirovic would trust the move like castle's queenside. Um b4 is, is kind of a gift of a pawn sacrifice, just opening files. So the queen went back to d7, and now e3. So instead of castling, 
basically Tal is wanting to seize the initiative straight away with d4. So for example after knight e7 then d4 it's actually rather uncomfortable for black. Not not so easy to, to develop quickly. Whereas white is already to castle. So knight e7, well if white exchanges then of course that will ease black's uh, de developmental problems, <laughs> knight of six and castles. Um, and if d4, that's not so great in this case because here black can exchange and, and now, well, in this case there's no knight attacked on c6 and probably black can get away with this. You'll see that that pawn's under fire. So Tal now plays an excellent move which is perhaps a little bit unexpected, but knight c3 is a really strong move. Just withdrawing the knight seems paradoxical to, to retreat the knight, but actually it leaves black a little bit gummed up. You know, black's development is still not a simple task. So castles, and white still wants to play d4, so for example knight g6 and then d4. Um, so. Vlimovic started to improvise, e4, and now here Tal was tempted by a very aggressive continuation. I would say that um, nowadays someone like Carlsen would perhaps just retreat the knight without too much thought, play very pragmatically, and play something like d3, and I think this gives white a very comfortable game, and I think you, well, you can see that white is very well developed, has positional pressure against the backward pawn on d6, and also, you know, these light squares are weak. Very powerful bishop, potentially on b2. Nice position for white. But it's interesting that Tal was, was tempted by a sacrifice. So knight g5, this is, and this starts to get very tricky. Well, the obvious move, queen f5, can be about my knight b5 threatening uh, these checks and if queen g5 then well white picks up the rook and that's just too much for black with the king staggering around the middle of the board so black has to play d5 which is not a bad move and then queen f5 and the point is that if white tries the same thing with knight b5 then knight takes covers c7 but also d6 is covered and, and black gets away with that but Tal had planned something here he just hacked off the pawn on f7 and king takes and this is one of those sacrifices that you simply cannot analyze to a conclusion all you can say is that white has the initiative and and Tal appreciated that this would be extremely difficult for black to defend. So after sacrificing, he just wants to open up the position and white's development is fantastic, black is struggling. So if this is taken, then the pawns start to roll down the board and well, it's obvious that white has fantastic compensation for the piece there. With these two very mobile pawns and black's king staggering around. Uh, but Vlimovic played well here, he played knight d5 and after pawn takes, opening up the f-file, he took and queen e4, so he's kind of stabilizing the position. Queen h5 check from Tal. Okay, the pressure mounts. Now if queen g6, whoops, excuse me, if queen g6, then queen d5 check, and that looks pretty awful once the queen takes. So the king comes up the board. Now it's really important that white keeps the initiative here. Queen h3 check. And I think for Volimovic played. Um, in a very brave way here. He could have brought the king back, which does allow white to make a draw with queen h5. 
I mean, I doubt whether Tal would have gone for that. I think White can play Rook F5, and you know, for example, Rook here, and there's no doubt that White has. All you can say is White has decent compensation. You know, if the Rook moves, you can you can take here. I mean, that, I think that to some extent that would be a safe option for Black, or safer than the game. King D6 is more ambitious. The king is looking to hide on the queen side. But now, a great move from Tal. If, if he takes on f6, the obvious move, then the king runs away, and well, black is finding his feet here. You know, the rook will, will come across to, to one of these squares trading. I think, you know, white, I think the big danger is that, that pieces will be swapped off. You know that the queen stands very well on e4, very nicely centralized. So Tal played b4, and again, I think this is just a kind of instinctive move. He wouldn't have been able to calculate this to the end. It's instinctive. He just wants to open up Black's king. An excellent move. So the king drops back. It's running away, and now rook c1, pointing in the right direction. Again, played it. I would say purely on instinct. And, I mean, this is so hard to defend. You know, I think it's clear what white wants to do, but for black, you know, it's, it's so easy to go wrong here. Flimerich played rook c8, which looks like a really natural move, just wanting to tuck the king into the corner, and if the king reaches safety in the corner, should be fine. Probably rook e8 is better. And well, my computer suggests rookie six, rookie eight, and rookie six. And I mean, white obviously has some compensation. Um, I mean, I, I'd say these are not easy moves to find. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of reluctant to go into any detail with analysis here because, you know, this is a practical game, and you know, it, it. Well, I've used this phrase before, but it throws sunlight on magic. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a pity. Um, let's see the genius of Tal. So, after rook c8, a very plausible move. Black's king wants to run away, but this is a fantastic idea. Rook f5, and there's there's a very very clever tactical point to this. If the king tries to run for the corner, then you give a check. That was the point of rook f5. And now the rook is unprotected. So rook f6. Tal was so good at, ex at spotting these little tactical nuances in a position. So clearly the move that Vlimovic had intended, king b8, doesn't work. And that must have thrown him. Because from now on he starts to make inaccuracies. After queen g4, well... An obvious move blocking this diagonal, but the check brings the king back in the middle and now queen f1. And this is starting to look very dangerous because that queen has moved from its strong central post and suddenly, you know, this queen b5 looks like a threat. The queen moves back, but now it's starting to get hit. And this is very nice. The second rook comes into the game. This, the, 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 the movements of the rooks in this game are one of the reasons that I was attracted to this. You know, I, I really like the way Tal plays with his rooks here. So the queen came back, and well, you could probably take on f6 here, but Tal returns with the queen. This is such an attractive move, actually, cutting cutting across here. And well, if the king steps out of the way, then you could take on c5 and. Yeah, you, you just want to be able to play rook d4 check here. And, for example, here you can take and rook d6 and the queen will come in here and black's king just uh, gets cut to pieces. So queen e6 played, Tal took on f6. If queen takes c4, here's a nice tactic, you can take here and then play rook f7 check and that double check is absolutely fatal. 
black recaptured on f6 and now rook e4 again the rooks just play beautifully here um, if that's taken then let me see yes you can simply win the queen with rook e5 that's nice and after queen a2 rook c5 check is fatal black resigned here obviously that rook dropping that rook again vulnerable on c8 fantastic game by tar um as said you know i i'm reluctant to point out possible defenses for black there were you know looking at it with a computer you can see holes in this but actually defending this in practical play almost impossible and as tal said i shall observe for the thousand and first time years of analysis and minutes of play are not quite the same thing so there we are tal sums it up as ever with his very nice gentle wit great game well uh, thanks for watching and don't forget candidate starts on March the 11th and I'll be making regular reports each after each um, round so look out for those thanks for watching